<laughs> Welcome everyone to SGTV Interview Sessions. <laughs> I'm your host, <laughs> Luke Baker. <laughs> Joining me, as always, my co-host, Jake Hutchison. How you doing? I'm good. How you doing, Luke? And we have a special guest with us today, comedian Elijah Schlesinger. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> All right, I have I have one quick question. Where did you get where where did I'm sure you answered this before. Where did you get where is Blanche? Really, because this question has taken yeah, I'm, I many seconds to I come up. Where did I get Blanche from? Yes, the sea. She came from a from a pet adoption. Well, place. I, like, where'd you get the name from? Oh, the name. Yes. Oh, I thought you meant. Sorry, the actual I dog. apologize. I should have. Don't apologize. It's a podcast. Uh, <laughs> That's true. The real answer. People always say, "Is it from Golden Girls?" And I used to give the real answer, and I just started saying yes because it made it easier. But the real answer is, it's from Greece. The assistant principal to Miss McGee was named Blanche, and there's a scene where Miss McGee goes, "Oh, Blanche," and she hands her a tissue, and. Uh, it comes from that. Okay, yeah. I actually remember that scene. Yeah. That's like yeah. my like second favorite movie. Because it's like really the only time we reference the assistant principal. She has like three yeah. scenes. Yeah. Not even so. Jake, do do you, weren't you like 12 when that movie came out? <sighs> Man. <laughs> like. <laughs> no, it came out like. It was close. <laughs> no, it probably came out before. It came out like 1980. I was alive. Probably. Five or something. Yeah, you're probably. I was I was born in '86, so yeah. <laughs> I was probably okay. just taking a couple of victory laps. Um, <laughs> okay, I'm so, older than you, so yeah. <laughs> okay, great, <laughs> cool. Um, so you're doing a nine day tour now, and that's seven venue, seven nine days and seven. Uh, I need you seven to get venues. your shit together for the podcast. <laughs> I know, I'm fucking up. You're I'm, in the I'm presence thinking. of a D-list celebrity. I need you to treat yeah. this with professionalism. Step your game up, sir. Uh, um, oh, what's what's the experience been like so far? Has it been. Of this tour? Yeah. Um, I don't know, because usually you go out for, you'll do a college, you come home. Like, it's one day. Or if you're doing a theater, it's one day you come home. Or if it's a club, it's Thursday through Saturday. So I'm very used to that. So this was just, I have never. I don't think I've ever done a tour while being in my own country for this long. And I can't pack a second bag because of my dog. So I've rolled everything into my one, like, to me, carry-on bag. Um, it hasn't been a stressful, knock on wood. All the flights have been on time. Um... So it's cool. It's cool to get to see the country and to get to be out of L.A., clear your head. I like it. It's a, it's a good way to also get a lot of comedy batting practice in uh, in a condensed amount of time. It's cool. Um, <laughs> cool. Oh, well, okay, so you're doing a couple colleges on this little tour. Um, what Two. was your college experience like? It was, it was great. I went to the University of, University of Kansas my freshman year. And then I transferred to Emerson in Boston because I wanted to be a film major. So those are two very different experiences. One is a giant state school, and then one is uh, an artsy, you know, liberal arts college, private in Boston, right in the heart of downtown Boston, so not a proper campus. So I got a taste of both of those, and I loved it. I love college. I didn't spend that much time there. I graduated early and did a semester at sea. So, uh, but it's, the, it's your time to really just do whatever you want. There's no repercussions. Obviously, if you kill someone, like, that's a no-no. But yeah, it's really such a great time to just get drunk, have fun, do what you want to do, and you just keep that in mind because you might not get to do it for the rest of your life. Yeah. I agree. I did, that. I did that so much I dropped out of college the first time. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's also that. So, uh, like, was it in college that you found, like, you started exploring comedy more, or was it kind of afterwards, or it was kind of like, you know, hey, I'm kind of good I'm at this. I'm from Dallas, Texas, so there's not a lot of, like, Hollywood aspects there. We have, like, a place where they shoot, like, car commercials. So I always loved sketch comedy, and I love Saturday Night Live and Kids in the Hall and Adam Sandler, like, all those things. But there's no real outlet for that. So as soon as I could, I joined an improv troupe in high school, and then they had a sketch troupe in, in college. And that was what I spent all my time doing. So because it was my first chance where I was finally around other comedic-minded people. And my high school was a, like a college preparatory high school. All my friends were, everything was about sports and academics, which was cool because I enjoyed having that background. But it was my first time around other funny people. So I got to be ensconced in that, if you will. It is awesome being around people that have your common interests. Like for the, you know, just yeah. You can't find that when you're I visited younger. the campus and I was like, oh my God, like these kids are just like me. And it was the only time I'd ever felt that. Yeah. Yeah. I so. feel like that doing this. That's awesome. Cool. <laughs> yeah. So, I have a quick question. I have a friend of mine, like a really close friend who takes all my classes with me. You think I'm hot? Phone classes. Yeah. And um, she, uh, oh, she thinks I'm she, hot. Yeah. She's cool. breaking, she wants to do stand up comedy. Great. And I was wondering if you had any advice for someone who's trying to like get started and like just starting out trying to figure it out. Such a lame question, but I will answer. Yeah. <laughs> I'm asking. Just like anything else, you have to just do it. You have to put in the stage time. 
you don't, you know, if you're just starting, you don't need to have your point of view yet, but it really is like there was a girl in the audience that was a bodybuilder. It's like a sport. You have to put in the 10,000 hours plus at the gym. You have to put in the time to build it out, you know, and all your crappy sets that you're going to do, they all help make you a stronger comic. So the answer is just get on stage. If you're tired, if you don't like your set that night, you have to just keep doing it. There's no other way to do it. And be nice to other comics. Yeah. Don't be yeah, a dick. Course. Yeah, don't, don't do that. <laughs> don't be a jerk, man. Now, I wanted to... Oh, switch. and be yourself. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Now, don't I wanted to switch it up uh, kind of a little bit. You but, ask me um, sports questions? No, no sports questions. Okay. But what has grinded your gears like just recently? What's grinding my gears just, recently? Just do you have a family guy? Yeah. You don't really grind my gears. Yeah. That's what, that's what we always say in the office. He's like, God, you're grinding my gears <laughs> right now. Yeah. So I have a podcast called Truth and Eliza, and on it, all we talk about are things that bother us. Yep. Um, oh, everything bothers me. I gotta think. What upset me yesterday? What upset me today? <laughs> this is my impression of two rats having Thanksgiving. <laughs> They're having a fight. I'm thinking. Because I don't want to say like airlines, like I don't want to say the yeah. things that, and people always make fun. They're like, oh, it's so hacky. But like when you're a comic, so much of your time is spent flying. So that's a legitimate thing. It's not a bit. Bothers me. Yeah, oh, okay. Well, I'll just tell you. This is so a semi-isolated incident. Is this your hand on my hand? Oh my goodness. <laughs> She's always posing. If I could squeeze the life out of my dog right now, I would. Like, if I could crush her neck. I would, because oh, she's no. so cute. <laughs> yeah, squeeze she it. She's very cute. Squeeze it. Beautiful dog. <laughs> there was this really gross guy this morning who was like definitely wearing a wig. Like not even a hairpiece, like a wig. Like it was like a little <laughs> backward wig and we were in the airport coming here. And ugh, he pet the dog. I always let people pet the dog. But then like you could tell that he was like petting the dog to talk to me. And I wasn't flattered because he was like terrible looking and wearing a wig. <laughs> and, and by the way, only unattractive men talk to me. I've never, hot guys never hit on me on Twitter. It's never like a hot dude hitting on me like in general. It's always like someone hideous with like a hook. This guy had a wig. It was like sweating. Like, yeah, it's never, uh, if there were hot dudes on the plane. No one wanted to talk to me. Not that I was putting forth any effort in like my pajamas. Is this popping? Okay, so, but he had the wig and he bet Blanche and then Blanche kind of rolled over and I was on the phone. Like I was texting, which is 90% of the time, gentlemen, girls are pretending to text because we want you to go away. Like if I'm not looking, if I'm not making eye contact with you, like that's a social indicator that like I don't want to talk to you. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Leave us, leave us alone. Leave us alone. <laughs> So I'm sitting there and he like pet her and then she like rolled over for a belly rub and he was like, oh, she loves the attention. And he was like, she's kind of slutty, which yes, I have a joke about my dog being a prostitute, but I know he didn't know that I was a comic and that's a little offensive. So I was like, yeah, you know, dog prostitute or whatever. He's like, oh, and I made a joke. I've never said this phrase in my life. I go, she plays it fast and loose. I'm not even positive what that means. I think it's a vagina reference, but I don't know what the fast part comes. I don't know. I just said it like it was just gibberish. And he was like, well, that's how I like my women and a little slut. And then it got like kind of weird. And I was like, yeah, okay. And then he cool. stopped petting her and I was like, hey, and I'm on my phone. And he stood there. And I don't know if he was staring at me or her, but for like a good 45 seconds. That's and it's just crazy. like, who the fuck raised you? That's creepy. That It is creepy. And then he kept talking. I'm sorry, I'm just going to go off. The then he kept uh, talking about you. the food he was going to get. I'm going to go get some food. Does she like food? I'm like, even if she hasn't eaten in days, I'm not giving you any excuse to come back and talk to me. And I lied. I'm like, she doesn't eat people food. My dog subsists exclusively on people food. <laughs> like, we sh I haven't had a sandwich to myself in like six years. I was like, she doesn't eat people. It's anything to deter this wig wearer from coming back. And then he left and he came back with his sandwich. And he's sitting there, he's like, oh, mama says you can't have it. I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> talking to her to like get attention to me. And I'm still on my phone. And I had prepared a line about like, because mm -hmm. he was like, how long have you had her? And I stupidly just said six years. And what I should have said was my husband and I, or my boyfriend uh, and I just yeah, introduced any man, my fucking bone crushing husband who's in the bathroom. <laughs> Just like getting Crossfire. ready to come choke you out with his wiener. <laughs> I didn't say anything. I was like, mm. and then he was like saying that and he kept talking and then he takes out a sandwich and he's eating it, staring at her. And I'm, I, and I'm again, this is like out of my periphery because I'm on my phone. But then it all came to a head because he dropped his sandwich and he had to like bend down and pick it up in front of me. Oh, and like God. you could tell like his knees weren't good. Oh, so he was no. down like picking up the sandwich oh, no. for a good like 20 seconds. Like it shouldn't take anyone that long. Oh, no. And then he like walked away with his tail between his legs. Oh. Like, okay, bye. And then he walked, when I was sitting on the plane, he walked past after and he was like, oh, there she is, pretty girl. And I'm like, it's a wig, everyone. It's a wig. It's a <laughs> like silver wig. It's a silver like a wig. Why bother? What airport was this at? 
Just curious. Uh, where did I come from? Providence. Oh, okay. There's I no like, stereotype uh, about okay. Providence. No, I thought it would be funny if it was Charlotte. Because I'd been oh, Charlotte no. North Carolina. I don't even know but it'd be funny if it was and it was in Arrivals and I was just yeah. hanging out. Mm-hmm. All right. You said something about being nice to comics earlier. And yeah. I randomly found this. I'm a big fan of Schmozno on a movie show on YouTube. I'm a massive mm. fan of them. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm very mm. familiar. Yeah, I, I'm aware. I've listened to... Dabbled in yeah, it. I've, I've, I've listened to a, quite a few of your podcasts over the last like month. But uh, I had Mark on, right? Yes, yeah. you did. That was the first one I listened He's to. He's one of my best friends. Yeah, because I'm your third best friend as your podcast. Is. My third best friend. He won't admit to it. And we just recently did a, the Cabo Del Mar Festival, Cabo Festival in Del Mar in, in California. He drove me home. And we, we take a lot of road trips together. Oh, and his Ford Fusion. And his Ford Fusion, which is <laughs> filled with Qdoba rappers at the moment. I, that, that actually oh. makes a ton of sense. Lance was like wading through them. But I Mark's got a girlfriend now, so he doesn't need to keep it clean. Well, that's, yeah, he does yeah. need to clean up. His well, Ford Fusion, you know what kind of thing. Well, he, I watched, well, I'm a fan. Oh. <laughs> it was a big day when he got it. I think he had like a Mercury yeah. before that. It was oh. a big day. Yeah, but it's he, a um, nice, yeah. They randomly put up a video of the first time they met. And it was this random, it was a bunch of like, it was a, Little pilot grasping at straws. Ah, uh. that looked like something. <laughs> oh, you did that your we research. Did. Yeah. And, well, I just I remembered off the top of my head because I would watch it before and I was like, I swear I think she's in that show. So I like hunted oh through God, the world so... and found it. So I was wondering, what did you like? How did that happen? And like, what do you think of it now? <laughs> I don't <laughs> think of grasping at straws. That was for our friend group at the time. It was so long ago. You know, an effort. This was. At, had it been made now it might be different but this was before web series and people were doing things with like non-linear programming I mean I don't even think I watched the whole thing but um, <laughs> I always gave Christian kudos for making something because so yeah. many people talk about it and don't do it but yep I was in that and yep it lives online forever 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 I randomly found it how many views like, does it have like a, a thousand at least, or something? At least 30 a thousand okay, oh, okay. <laughs> I have no idea, I have no idea. <laughs> it looked like so it looked like something that like you know like a, it looked like a group of friends getting together like trying to do something cool well what's funny awesome. is like I just read for a show on Showtime yeah. that is about a comedy club and it's not there have been so many people that are like hey let's do something about comics it's just a tough code to crack yeah. there was a show, show called Studio 60 on the Sunset Strip a while ago I think it had Matthew Perry and it was a like a dramatic look at like Saturday Night Live like a yeah. sketch show <laughs> I don't know if people necessarily want that. And if we have, like, we haven't found the way to, to show that. It, it's such people always want to know about stand up, but it's always so hard to do art about it. Yeah. 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 I think Louis, I don't know if you watched Louis, yeah. but Louis has the perfect, like, combo with that. Uh, in some way, it's it got more drama. And his is, about, his is about his narrative, yeah. and it's not about the, the making of the set. So, like, the whole thing, and, like, yeah, and like, it's not about the club. Like, he mm-hmm. stops off at, like, the cellar and stuff like that. But, yeah. uh, yeah, if you can get around to it. Yeah, Jim Jeffries has a show very similar to that. Legit. I like was, that guy. All yeah, right. I'd so we're finishing up. I want to do a little rapid fire round. <laughs> okay. I got some questions. Okay. Um, what is a useless talent that you have? I can uh, do an R&B cat singing. I don't know if it's useless. But. R&B cat. Can you give us like a little preview? Meow. <laughs> 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 well played. Okay. I can like I also on that vein I can sing to scale isn't the right word but like as a hamster like in a hamster voice I can sing all, any song really? perfectly wow like Alvin like kind of like Alvin and Chipmunk yeah, style. a little bit but I can like I feel like I'm hitting all the notes in the right order but it's in hamster tone That's awesome. <laughs> see if I can do one like um let me think I know you're like braced for something amazing to happen right now and I can't guarantee that uh, song? what's like a hard song um uh uh okay well done maybe it's anybody could be, i think i messed up the lyrics sorry <laughs> ariana um and final Ooh, question from this is if ethics weren't a problem what reality show would you like if like to see nothing no one was like oh that's bad or just some unethical reality show that you would create or, aren't or all un- I mean is there anything ethical about like dance moms <laughs> like are any of these shows probably not. real housewives <laughs> ethical <laughs> is putting your children on display ethical uh, not I, I not don't think so I think reality shows exist primarily because they're unethical oh yeah so yeah. you're asking do I want to see like people be beheaded like an ISIS videotape like well I mean like <laughs> well, well, what do you want over, you sick fuck what do yeah, you, what do you want to see yours? Like, fire it up well, what do you want <laughs> over, over the top thing I think it, it was like we had TJ Miller on and he was like uh, I'd like to have like kids slapping each other or something I don't remember what it was I'm sure what it they was. have that, yeah. that is, oh that's on there somewhere <laughs> I don't want to say anything with kids because that very can become a very slippery slope like oh, that yeah. was just yeah. weird you don't want to jump on um, that um yeah 
avoid children. Here's the thing, like we already have shows about like plastic yeah. surgery and stuff like that. Like if you really think about schadenfreude, which is the idea that you're getting pleasure from someone else's pain. So I don't think I'd like to see that. I don't think I would like to see that. Would you kill all reality TV if you could? <laughs> I would kill spinoffs and I yeah. would stop the ability. I would stop people who haven't done anything like, you know, you did, you touched a famous person. Now you get your own show. I would stop yeah. making famous. I would stop making stupid people famous. That makes like sense. there would be some oh. sort of bar exam you had to take. Yeah. yeah. Some sort of aptitude test um, because we think it's funny and we think these people are idiots, but they're making money. Granted, they'll yeah. be dead soon and no, they won't yeah. make it out of the rehab house I'm just saying yeah. <laughs> that was, that was pretty interesting because the one you did with Dr. Drew like Dr. Drew like, talked, I, really into I, it literally thought like, about that as you what said are that they, um, are they like narcissistic yeah. Or, yeah I think that was where they're just like so invested in what they're doing because sure. they're living their life and that's what it is for everybody that's what they have to do all the time in their privacy maybe a show where you could take on like online trolls or like people that are mean and saying ridiculous things like it's one thing to be like you're stupid but like things where yeah. you like you threaten people horrible. or you say horrible things to women and we come to your fucking house and with your wife standing there because a lot of times guys will write gross things to me and like in their avatar is a picture of their wife with them or something am i saying That's avatar am i using it correctly it's an yeah, avatar yeah. as correct. if and as if what they're doing like as if i would as if I have so much respect for the sanctity of their marriage that I wouldn't just repost that and go to their house and be like, what the fuck do you think you're doing? Yeah. That's what I would like. It's almost like a reverse catfish in a weird way. <laughs> a and just like catfish. a day of reckoning for just Twitter monsters and people that think it's okay to like openly threaten women and make people feel bad about being gay or having red hair and all that shit that we, That's that we think show. is important. Yeah. I would watch this Copyright, shit I copyright it. My idea. Okay. Copyright Eliza. <laughs> um, and it would, we, it would just be called Shame and we would get that woman from Game of Thrones to do the theme song. No, that the none with the shame. tits. Shame. shame. That would be awesome. Right? Yeah, that would be, that would be the shit. Um, right. um, yeah, that'd be cool. I would, I would love that. I would get so horny for So, that. like, every time they just ring a bell in the background. Shame. That's, we don't even ring your doorbell. It's just, she just comes through the door. Shame. And then it's just you sitting there, like, jerking off, like, saying horrible things to girls. And we're like, hey, asshole. And the guy's just horrible. He's like, oh, my mom left, and that's why I'm terrible to women. <laughs> like, well, now your face is on MTV. And now you get your own reality show. Reverse catfish. Yeah. Yeah. Like what's it. the opposite of a catfish? Um, dog. Dog. There's dog, a dog fish. Dog bird. Yeah. Dog bird. Dog bird. Yeah. That's it. Nailed dog it. bird. I think we figured it out. Fish is the opposite of bird. <laughs> dog bird. <laughs> I think. I don't really know. I think you're right. I was like, what is it? <laughs> One only flies. One's in the air a lot. I don't yeah. know. Dog bird. <laughs> Executive producers. Perfect. Can, what's his name? Like Eve? What, yeah, that's his name. He would have to yeah. be the host. Yeah. 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 I like it. We can get a Nev Campbell because it sounds like that's stupid. Okay, Dogbird. <laughs> <laughs> Dogbird. Dogbird. Right, well, I appreciate you sitting down with us you. Thank you. for um, our little Bodunk podcast. Um, <laughs> You're welcome. But, Thank you. Um, it was weird because you already set up the equipment. I couldn't say no. <laughs> you were here for like ever setting up. <laughs> no, but I appreciate you sitting down with us. Thank Very you busy schedule. And. Uh, Thank you. Uh, Elijah Schlesinger came out for Carolina Productions on Thursday. I came out. Shout outs to them. Check them out later. Check us out on YouTube, whatever. All the, all the nonsense. Check out Eliza's podcast, Truth and yeah. Eliza podcast on iPhone and on, the iTunes. on your iPhone. On yeah. your iPhone. Access on it your from the internet. Yeah. Access it yeah. from the internet. Thanks, you guys. Thank you so much.